Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Was asked if I could perform security work for Meghan because her death threat kept rising in the years since Harry and his family stepped away from royal family life in the UK, I have encountered bits of supporting evidence as well criticism. But honestly, I have never read any content that has made me feel both amused and angry at the same time. Nowhere has the perpetrator so shamelessly morphed into a victim. Even going through making this video has flamed a rage inside of me I can't put into words. I am, from frustration at the current situation. It is hard to believe that the expulsion of Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle from Frogmore Cottage was a mistake made by King Charles, because if in fifty or even more years he will be talked about not too well. The move, which he made after her 2022 spare release date for his memoirs of Harry and effectively deprived the couple home UK so long as this was not possible to return their family. One royal expert, Tom Quinn claimed that this would have riled up Harry and Meghan a great deal because it strikes at the relationship between a king and his grandchildren. In The Crown, Charles wants a no-frills and frugal monarchy but it seems he did not quite anticipate the consequences this eviction would have on global family dynamics and his grandchildren's connection to Britain. Director, Tom Quinn again writer by Tyler Interviews Who the hell is this royal commentator Tom Quinn anyway? Who does he think he is that breaking such unprecedented daring news? This means that for the man on the street to sit back pontificating over royal matters is just simply dumb without understanding what else surrounds and interweaves itself into such a world. Sure, Tom Quinn may pose as a royal aficionado, but does he really have insider knowledge of the mechanics at Buckingham Palace? Quinn's comments are lacking in empathy and come across as arrogant. A critical about King Charles that is entirely focused on the monarch and not once taking into account what a life as king means in terms of pressure and duties deserves to be examined. Kicking Harry and Meghan out of Frogmore Cottage was no impulsive move, the crown is just trying to protect their future icons. While Quinn might fancy that he has a full grasp of the world in which this family moves, it is only those on the inside for whom just as much goes wrong if not more often. It leads the public astray, and it damages people. Maybe this, Quinn writes something that digs instead of scolding from a distance? Undoubtedly, royal commentator Tom Quinn is being used by Meghan, a pawn in Meg and Harry's chess game. How can one person be the judge of such a slanted and prejudiced opinion, on matters royal? Her journalism ethics have been called into question after spouting off with comments that are baseless and obnoxious but it's clear she has since bent the knee to Harry trotting out his promises. I, for one, stand with King Charles and fully support his decision to oust Harry and family. This was exactly what he deserved and this gives me some kind of pleasure, the more so that it is a just choice in such situation. It was the right call. The kids were carrying on as though they might be almost all and only, more or less that much out completely ignoring the Queen. What they needed was nice clean words, but you can't get any neater or clearer message than the one a set of eviction papers speak, so this is what happened. They desire their privacy. Segs Royal wished to leave the royal family. They are the privileged ones, who had to go find their ways now, so they can be called individuals. In a place that already makes Knott's Berry jams, and where people can visit an amusement park built by the local jam expert? I suppose they plan to buy Neverland and exchange it towards their fantasy due to the fact that they believe Michael Jackson. King Charles, being a practical man, could hardly leave an estate empty. However, it was made increasingly clear when Harry hit back at the royal family after some of his criticism-laden interviews with the firm emerged that he despised, his, own flesh and blood, and there could be no going back. So King Charles is doing exactly what you or I would do in this situation. And, Mr. Quinn, just to make clear again, it was not the king who told the Markles they had 60 days to get out of Frogmore. It is, after all a crown estate property. That is because the Markles were leasing it, and like any lease agreement, it expired. They were told that they would not have their lease renewed and requested to leave the property. That settles the matter. 
Although they have whined their son was thrown out despite everything, this is another untruth from the Markles managed by y'all latest. Megan thought she could Americanus and modernize our monarchy, by Laura Taller she told American TV viewers that she would hit the ground running, even suggesting Britons should elect Harry as king proving how little this woman knows of anything to do with sovereignty since it is one job no but us a head of state does not get by election like president. The thought of fitting in with the family was rejected by her. But one thing was certain, she trusted Harry to keep his promises and make her queen all pure Disney-like fantasy. Meghan lives in a fantasy world. Stupidly she thought that marrying Harry would make her a princess, in a castle and finally become queen this false misconception rooted from her that she did not know anything about the royal family and their traditions. So, as usual, Megan went charging off all willy-nilly without even stopping to think about what the fuck was going on. In friendships and other aspects of her life where they did not meet the expectations she carried, she simply walked away. Tom Quinn really is now Harry and Meghan's biggest cheerleader, even ahead of Scooby-Doo. Harry and Meghan were not asked to leave Frogmore the residence stayed mostly vacant from the time they left for Canada until the lease expired. The king should not be sorry for anything since they never stop babbling lies, making accusations and hostilities towards the royal family as well as the nation. Anyone who says that Harry and Meghan would be visiting more if only they had usage of Frogmore is a fool. The king is powerless to stop Meghan from digging her heels in, determined never to end playing the victim. She has done an excellent job at completely cutting Harry off from his family, and she is not going to take any chances on letting him see that they are not the enemies she made them out to be. Harry was twenty in year that Charles married Camilla, 2005, he most certainly was not a child at the time of Charles wed Camilla. Harry was also at Eton College from 1998 to 2003 and entered Sandhurst in May, 2005, they are looking a little cramped, all before Charles married Camilla with whom he spent limited time. But despite this, Harry remained at Clarence House until he was 28 in 2012. He later relocated to a one-bed flat at Kensington Palace. He then stayed at Nottingham Cottage from 2013 until his move to Frogmore in 2019. This last, mind you, awarded to an adult Harry without his father. As for the closet yes it does kill me to see someone who is doing what a lot of people do, they have an empty room because their adult kid moved out so they repurpose it. How Megan managed to already convince Harry that he was a victim even before she came into his life. No, he was not predominantly raised by his grandparents. Fond barf Megan turned Harry against his own brother and father, tainting him with distrust leading to an enmity towards his dearest family. But some of the blame must fall to Harry, for not being smart and alert enough. He is quite vulnerable. Eventually, however, the ripple effect of Harry's move to America and subsequent alienation from royalists, especially his decision not to attend Prince Philip's funeral, laid down vast pebble drops which must certainly be still rippling through Lilibet Diana Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. I am unsure, and so must everyone else be. Let's assume they do exist. So what? Those kids are American. They will never understand their real legacy. At five and even at three they should enjoy their childhood in peace. It will be shared with them in due course why their mom and dad left the old country to come here, as well stories about their father's family. The combination of round tables boys and girls when Archie is maybe five, yep he will be asking where was never born their grandpa Charles slash grandma Diana just as they are no grandma Doria. There is no such necessity since they are not in line for the throne. They are immigrant family their kids will at some point hear their stories as any good immigrant was and should. Hell, King Charles never even visited the kids in their homeland they literally just brought Lily over once to say hi while his wife and him were off doing royal things elsewhere. They did visit her great-granddaughter, Queen Bee, but were turned away for a photo. It was Archie and his mother's last trip to Britain. By the way, King Charles did not evict them from Frogmore. Her lease was up, and she didn't want to renew it because Meghan hated where they were, she wanted a castle. Their children? None of them visited their grandparents or father even when they had the lease. 
There would have been nothing in Henry being able to take his family as he pleased, even if it was just for the family events or visiting the king. The palace always said it would accommodate the family at one of their royal residences on any notice. But none of this was good enough for Henry and Nutmeg. They demanded an equivalent level of security at all times around the world and were not for budging over a UK address, Highgrove Estate. Until they do, she has told them that not even can come to visit, which of course means being excluded from family snaps, Ocene Day with little Princess Henry Archie Lilbet and King Charles. Their key motive is security, and when their terms are met the couple said they intend to raise significant sums from Netflix for unspecified projects before potentially reopening hostilities with the royal household. Meeting the children of William, they are suspiciously convinced that their kids have absolutely nothing in common. William and Catherine will want to be very sure of what they do, within Harry's family fold or otherwise gilded Meghan up front or not. However, Harry was able to return because of the fact that Charles is his grandfather. Yet the public is still not for fiving Harry and should he return to the UK, this could result in potentially being booed at or even worse having tomatoes thrown. As such, it appears there can be no good coming from Harry's return and so he should perhaps leave the UK vibe to remain unspoiled. Crucially they do not want any coward to return and use them as a bargaining chip. The children never travelled, anywhere so the house for kids was redundant. She continues to not need the house as Meg refuses to come home. Harry thinks the best hotels are those in which people take care of him. The money for these home improvements didn't go toward rent offsetting Charles and Crown Estates may have been incredibly frustrated by this. Aren't the Sussexes ever not aggrieved or mad about something? This should not matter to them as they are severely unhappy and unappreciative. Well, they made the right decision in that while Frogmore is not a place they care for much themselves, nonetheless it would have troubled them if someone else lived there. The resentment, surely, is reversed, it was Harry who did the damage. So absolutely no reason to kick them out, they weren't going to try and get their children in the UK. Long removed from American scene, they weren't attached to the house this narrative of King Charles having wronged Harry and Meghan misses one important detail. Public division and family dysfunction are two things that the royal family have worked so hard to avoid, but their actions more often than not seem determined to cause both. In candor, or in vendetta, the wounds Harry was to inflict on that haughty royal phalanx of solidarity. It also makes the notion that Harry and Meghan wanted to keep some foot in the door of their former lives particularly through what they did for Britain's children sound like useful cover rather than having anything much with reality. But their move to California and happiness in sunnier climes suggest that the idea of a return to the UK was never more than a distant flicker. It is further evidence that fitting their children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, too much in royal life was not high up on the list in UK society when we are only seeing a smattering of public appearances from them even here across the pond. King Charles's decision to have them out of Frogmore Cottage is arguably a matter that must some kind be done in order to ensure the continuance and sanctity of the royal institution. Keeping a base for Harry and Meghan in the UK would amount to endorsing their capricious nature on royal duties while allowing them, when required, to be able to enjoy conveniences they have very publicly opted out of. Charles's intervention could be seen as a blueprint for the kind of leaner, meaner royal family and presumably monarchical institution that Republicans tout. Equally important, however, is the need to understand King Charles in a fuller context. He's walking a tightrope of modernizing the monarchy with its traditions. This is in keeping with his ideal of a slimmed-down monarchy that only sees active members contribute to its public obligations. This step is not only pragmatic but also caters to the mounting citizen cry for transparency and accountability. At the end of the day, any bitterness for King Charles's behavior should be expressed as sympathy for a royal family that is riddled with complexities. The actions Harry and Meghan are taking points toward an obvious move by which they take steps away from where their royal lineage suggests. King Charles might appear to be ruthless in his actions but they are mandatory at the point of time, as he tries to save monarchy from a challenge that have not ended yet. 
What is also more indicative of the situation being nothing but a gimmick to make headlines is this and them buying UK property doesn't really seem like a serious plan either. If Tom Quinn wants to lie, he needs to try harder he has so far demonstrated only that he is Scooby-Doo, clueless as his predecessor. I am thinking that this dragged-out plan is Henry's hope of Ho's father giving him another home at Highgrove Estate. It's a win-win for the Markles since they have such high security specifications. If they want to be transparent, maybe the kiddos will slide in for a few Kodak moments. Responsibilities fulfilled. They are doing to Charles what they did with our late Queen and Prince Philip. Their PR team is apparently working them overtime on this, especially King Charles who seems to suffer some wooziness from the pressure. How can Meghan Markle and rush out of Frogmore Cottage and sit there lamenting about been kicked from it? Earlier in the interview, she had expressed a desire for luxury and her sentiments about wanting to live like someone with higher status made this contradict greatly with how adamantly she was portraying herself as a poor victim. Then, just as suddenly and for no apparent reason that anyone could detect remember in March she said Frogmore Cottage under a mile away from Windsor Castle wasn't quite the correct shrine to her own exquisite sensibilities after all but was merely another disgraceful royal hovel on which only wallpaper paste had recently been splattered? Why now cling like an oversexed snail to your sleazy fire retardant nest if it's not good enough at any price maybe you can be thrown out of there too? It is not a far leap for the couple who proclaims financial independence and personal autonomy to buy their own home entirely with their cash. On a grander scale, but one parting the peculiar duality of deeply personal wants needing to be tempered with public requirements that comes intrinsically attached to life among kings and queens. Over there, Meghan and Harry declared that they were seeking financial independence as well an escape from their public subsidy entitlements plus duty bond to the crown. Any critique of how the Windsors conduct themselves regarding their accommodation will lack credence when placed alongside both Meghan and Harry's preferences and their comments about it. Amidst the journey towards settling down in America largely private, questions about fiscal duty and personal responsibility begin to loom larger as their future unfurls. The choices that they have made up until now, past and present continue to shape the way in which we view their place or not as it were depending on your perspective, within or outside of the royal family institution. North Gloss Sam Harry and Meghan bought the tum on Charles and William Chlamydia Mune to a penis piercing in because they connected North Gloss so good Yaya Harma. The presence of connected individuals or spies ensnaring their way to the Duke and Duchess's property only for selfies lacks an element that characterizes privacy. Sucks for their kids, cause this could have been a bad call. How Meghan holds sway over Harry and probably doesn't like Catherine Harry's pre-existing animosity and jealousy towards his brother are unlikely to melt away. In early 2023, after the publication of Harry's incendiary memoir that saw them told to quit Windsor and face life without a UK base in the summer. Misordered Light 3 on its knees to leave, oh dear they were given notice not evicted in case anyone has failed to notice it, as Mr. Quinn apparently did, King Charles does not own Frogmore. I dare say Mr. Quinn, you could not get any closer to the royal family unless it was with Henry and Reich. So you without any notion to Scooby what the king is thinking, and having a base at Frogmore hasn't helped Henry or Reich bring grandchildren see granddaughter picking things out air. As a wise man named Mr. Quinn says, and I often say, or hope you do you. The Goodisome are getting typical well-deserved idle week for earning up to a nearly non-existing family dollar. When they made off, the late queen was said to have told them no sodding way is the public paying for your expensive renovations while you're not even living there. She understandably recovered all the cash. And you have not the faintest notion who made that decision. Retribution for what? So dramatically thrown out. He told them to go and they went. I am absolutely positive the decision was massively influenced by Harry and Meghan's blunt rudeness. Even before being told to move out, they had already begun hiding children from anyone and everyone. And who the children in those photos are with Harry and his wife. At some point in time, this was one thing that someone started to propagate. Such a pity the king did not see them, 
but how they were flashed on that trip then I think he definitely made the right decision to let Frogmore Cottage. However, it is not the case that Harry and Meghan have any control over their emotions or know where to draw a line, there could be no peace for the royals because with them around there would never have been privacy. The king's grandchildren will always be able to visit the UK with him. Their mom would never even be in the same room with any of her husband's family. King Charles removed them and he was right to do so. What else have they done other than being a source of heartache for the royal family at large since leaving, the duke and queen as well as the king's cancers can be explained by their behavior. While they are certainly unable to live their life freely as Harry wished, I contend that every one of those five thinks even a slight bit differently than he does. He said Diana, Princess of Wales made the remark Williams always more dutiful. Harry eats all my leftover ice cream and is an airhead like me. Even though I didn't feel the same about it. The Prince of Wales, meanwhile has been raised in the knowledge that he would one day be named the King. Having come of age in an era when the monarchy was less embattled and press intrusion a shade more genteel, he has by contrast lived until seventy with few jarring disruptions. When Prince Harry once called William more deep, more meaty and always half his back. This makes Prince William very mindful of his duties as Harry's sibling and an heir to the throne one day. In interviews broadcast on TV, which can be found on YouTube, Harry admits he spoke to William for help during bouts of depression and got professional counseling. The two princes are also advocates of mental health charities and founded the charity Heads Together. Harry's comments likely weigh heavily on Prince William a man who arguably couldn't rely on his family when Meghan needed them most. Prince of Wales is described as a brave person while Harry who have image like that he, she always take good and care, this not means every time sensitive, emotional, but Prince Charles looks him as obst. However, much more so are his attention to the present rather than wallowing in what might have been. For the first time, he speaks out in an online television interview about the death of his mother, how her tragic end was exploited and what effect intrusion from media has had on him. He writes that he aimed for his mother to proud of him and says I wouldn't let it break me. It is implied that he accepts who his role in the world, shares Diana's view on his obligation and may be fit to sit atop the throne. Catherine offers an awesome example of how he found his own match. Harry has a bad methylation attitude. But, all in all if we are being honest this spiteful comment is meant to question the free love with which Prince William showers on his very existence, the lack of constraint there before he and Oprah got their spin-doctoring, fascinating. This projecting of feeling trapped onto William is quite projection-y. Others might say that Prince William is now a figure to be proud of Britain's number two after the Queen herself. Resilient, dutiful, and as a head of state guider during the virus he has that royal gift to feel one's love f-r-a-t-i-a-s-t-e-n-a-s-t-o-l-r-r-s-c albeit more in charming warmth like his mum, sorry Andy catching him emotionally last two years. His brother should not be receiving negative comments about his behavior from anyone, least of all the nation. We will now stop this unnecessary noise immediately. William overshadows anything Harry can do. Having exhausted the facts, Harry is left with innuendo by definition over the line and unprovable. These complaints sound like you and your wife, Harry, are resentful slash jealous of other family. But, in order to stay relevant you do need reference them because you are not ready for solo play by now. Thank goodness Prince William and Catherine put up with you for so many years, it speaks well of them. It is the grieving and grateful process of learning who you are without it thanks to this huge middle finger that has been done all in the royal family name which we both undid. Harry had no right to speak on behalf of William and Charles. Sure he can tell everyone that he feels trapped. In fact, you must do action. Still, make sure you are not pretending to know what your brother and father feel like. Or at least that's what he concluded when Meghan called him out on it made the fact that he felt so trapped perfectly evident to himself. They are now trying to get the other two royals behind this proposal. I cannot fathom this. I genuinely think they are not locked in. I think they know how to balance their public and private lives. While William and Catherine were able to largely keep that private side of their lives out of the public eye, 
a few parts do come through in images, many taken by Kate. As a mum, it's lovely seeing William and Catherine in family photographs taken on such memorable occasions, I think the public can relate to real life like this. In conclusion, I can say King Charles and William are not difficult. After all, these are grown-ups who have found a way to love their life even if others wouldn't choose it. But here, again the problem is that Harry has not grown up and thus seems to of the emotional maturity's levels as a 14-year-old. I hate you a little. Ash Jones, this is unjust. I'm going to show you, and then you're going to be sorry. This tragedy might not have been as serious had there only one child from the Sussex family. Now, Harry lives a half-life he never meant to acquire. Similarly, so many of us are also trapped in situations we never really wanted for a multitude of reasons. Harry, an ambivalent idiot savant whose dialogue is consistently garbled idiocy on par with a club kid. It showed the world that he is has no integrity and spouts only his deranged delusions caused by brain damage. Harry is trapped in a make-believe commie land and, no doubt this is the absolute truth. The story shows they are indeed very distinct people, both of whom take pride in their bloodline and aspire to better themselves. Of course, it is a wonderful role model for the late Queen and her dear Prince Philip. Current royals King Charles and Williams too have been unwavering in their pursuit towards farming, food sustainability, climate change and earth preservation. Encouraged by the relative radicality of Prince Philip's own views on environmental issues and his still thriving, globally recognized Duke of Edinburgh Awards program they are doing much the same. Nothing to spoil in the 60s my unencumbered life was interrupted. And Harry has managed to become the exact opposite, exploiting his status for all it's worth with no regard in return. He seems to a positive frame of mind towards life. He also admitted he felt trapped in his family when they and the Queen began to push back against his demands and actions. Certainly he has revealed himself to the world as a pig-headed brute. If Prince Charles and Prince William bang their heads against a wall and still can't break out of the family role, why should it piss off someone who finds himself seated in row number three at royal functions? Let us be honest, why does he not renounce his princely title and join the ranks of the common folk? He, and his puppet master as we have seen, demanded that titles be given to their sons immediately following the Queen's death. Why exactly is this behavior and lingo so confusing? Harry chafed at his circumstances, which only inspired more complaints. Little did he know, if he also wanted to continue living like that alongside the monarchy side in his corner of plenty and resources, then it was going to take a heck of an economic effort in order for him do so. He realized he did not want to work for the monarchy and made sure it was only his father who worried. He was giving me a headache. He gambles when he decides to slander his family, the monarchy and even Britain itself it is all downhill from there. Labor for all is the price of survival, and it just may not always be fun. Embrace it to carry on. He ended up a child that never grew an immature and spoiled brat. Meghan is a mom of three, and I feel sorry for her sometimes. I think he has managed to be irrelevant, with his wife Meghan's help by walking out on the working royal family setup that had been established before him and moving abroad, Canada then America, to make money slash chase fame. Regretfully, he is not aware of the cushy life they could have had due to his wife's desire for fame and riches. Instead of enjoy life, they took the route to sign pricey deals betraying their very own who cared for and guarded them. Due to his steadfast belief in how right and good he is, the only person who should share any form of blame here would be him personally, yet he absolutely refuses to change. Megan had continued to lie and manipulate, turning him into a slave for her needs which ultimately isolated Rensa from the group. It was spare part of the influence that lead Harry to treat his family worse than he would a slave in Georgia, because even though they share no blood with Megan and her mother at all he believed these two paranoid narcissists over more than 75 years worth of history servlet response, hatred, essay history on QEII. Now Chris being so emotional he was also too much in disbelief of others, and thought that Megan acted on non-malicious intentions. In each case, 
he is either not acknowledging the marginalization and dismissal that come with being a man in this situation of marriage or consciously dismissing those things. Harry and Harry alone is responsible for the global crisis in which he has created, King Charles or Prince either way don't matter. Imperfectly by getting out of the UK, knowing he wasn't heir number one. The thought of taking a job that's already been done, by Prince William in this case, shows Meghan has no grasp the right to become top dog is supposedly as ever her turn comes due, forever and without question. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.